Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's always, this is the worst Houston, part. Do we have a problem? We do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get to dance to the intro. No, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm hoping the intro went on. I think it did. I think we're good. We're recording. Yeah. We're good. This is the hardest part is pressing play. <laughs> it's the same thing when it comes to DJing introductions. Oh, yeah. Like once I get started, I'm good. Yeah. But it's like that transition <laughs> of like, you're good. Like I make sure I like, talk to we're all good. of the, the, like the photographers and videographer, the plan. I'm like, Hey, we're all thumbs are up. We're good. All right. Now it's on me. It's like take off. All right. Now I got to switch the song. And I just had to start talking. Yeah. Like I just had to introduce myself to everybody. <laughs> and it's so hard for me to do, but once I start, I'm like, okay, we're good. Yeah. So who are we? Hello. Hi. Brandy Harlan, your yeah. beautiful wedding expert yes. and uh, wedding planner still. And of course, Tim Schaus, you're from TLS Entertainment, your premier DJ. This Woo -woo. is the Scoop Weddings Unveiled. We've got a good one for y'all today. Yeah. Our topic of discussion is... Marriage counseling. Marriage counseling. All and the good things. All the good things. But before we get started, we of course have a, a few things that we always talk about beforehand. That's right. Um, and... Uh, Brandy, how was your weekend? Any any fun events? Did you do anything? What happened? We had one wedding. One wedding. Tell, one. tell me about it. Uh, it was good. It was 140 people. Super simple. Ran smooth. In and out. Nothing crazy. Nothing, nothing crazy. The only thing that was different was, remember how we talked about cake is kind of eh and kind of out? Yes. They did a pie bar and they cut a pie. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So that was, that was the most unique portion. I mean, it was all beautiful, but it's so just the, different. The last few weddings that, you, that you've that you been talking about at the Bishop, yeah. Um, do you, it, it's been like 150 plus. Yes. Our is that max, normal? I feel like it's bigger than it used to be. Average nationwide it's before like 75. COVID was 126. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Nation, before then, COVID, yeah, but now. Yeah, COVID 75. It's been crazy. Like, I think in the next few months, all of our weddings are like 150, 200. I was going through and adding like the additional security officer yeah. because they did first floor. When you do a first floor, we have to have two security officers. And when you're pushing 200 guests, there's only one or two of me. So me. I don't and know. What, like, what do you mean by first floor? Oh, what is so first floor of the museum is available for rent. So you what can really mean? give <laughs> your people an experience of the inside of the museum. So okay. all the collections, Priscilla, the Mastodon, um, Meg, the Megalodon, like all of the archaic peoples land before, like land of change. So the actual museum, so they the can go inside, in and see it. Yeah, the inside curation of the museum, the planetarium lobby, all the way through our gallery spaces that have Legos right now. Mm -hmm. So that is an option to rent and actually give your guests an experience that they've never had. So it's super exciting to do that. However, it just takes more people to kind of gallery guard, we call it, and to walk the spaces, make sure food isn't going into spaces that it shouldn't be. Okay. Because um, there are areas where we just don't simply allow food and drink. And um, so it's an experience. And usually... You have ceremony in the courtyard or the plaza. You can choose. And then you have reception, cocktail hour throughout the museum. We probably close the doors in the museum around 8, 830 when people just kind of don't venture through as much. Okay. Um, in regards to the first floor, as I mentioned, my wedding from last week did the TikTok dance of um, oh, yeah. from Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I posted it on my IG. It's it's on there. So she did her dance by Priscilla. Woo -woo. Yeah. So super cool. And no, her dress was not black, even though we thought it should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. True. <laughs> That's a hard, I mean, you know, it's a change and all that good stuff. So, but she did the dance really well. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we just had the one wedding. It was quiet and I, I it was smooth. Okay. So yeah. we like that. Yes. We like that. That, that doesn't happen regularly. So no. this planner well, was good. They were out on time. DJ was good. DJ was, it was a band. Okay. That was the other cool thing was it was a band okay. um, and a violinist for ceremony. Mm -hmm. So it was the occasions band and they did really good. Nice. Yeah. They looked very, um, what's the movie out with, uh, Tom, uh, Cruise, um, the old school movie that just came back out again with the aviator. Oh, Top Gun. Top Gun. The lead singer was very Top Gun looking. Oh, okay. Yeah. He had like the mustache and the glasses. Nice. He walked in with his little like jacket, his little uh, jean jacket. I was like, okay, you're okay. Pulling, the, pulling the vibes of a band member, but it was good. Okay. It wasn't like, I don't get bands very often. And so sometimes you wonder like, okay, is this like the garage band that their friends formed and how right. good are they? But they were really good and they play in Venice and, and. 
So y- he came in a, you said like a jean jacket? Yeah, a little Okay, jean so, and... you know, this isn't part of what we were going to talk about, but why not? I actually thought about this. Uh, attire. Yeah. For vendors, for yeah. wedding professionals. So yeah. I always make sure for, for myself and my team, depending on, like, on the planning forms that we always send to couples, um, I, like, I always say, like, what's the attire? Uh, what are you telling your guests that the attire is? So we yes. always dress accordingly. If it's if it's outdoor, <laughs> you know it, it's hot here in Florida. Yeah. So <laughs> it's hot. so we if it's outdoor, typically for the for the team, uh, we wear slacks and ATLS like black polo, or we have a white like yeah black or yeah. white polo, mostly black. But um, if it's indoor and it's like semi formal or formal attire. The guys are wearing suits. Mm-hmm. The girls, I mean, they have suits as well, or like their little pants suit. Yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. absolutely. We, we always dress super accordingly. But what I've noticed, Uh-oh. well, no, I've just it's just an observation uh, with like photography and video. <gasps> they and n- not y- y'all have a great product. A lot of your a lot of the photographers that we've worked yeah. with in the video, they put out a great product. Yes. And I understand there's a lot of moving parts that they're moving around. And same with the DJs. Like we have a lot of stuff that we're doing. Um, but I just noticed that they really don't care about their attire. No. They don't. It's jumpsuits. It's, it's sandals. I the the, yeah. the 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 photographer and videographer for Saturday, they had like Birkenstock sandals. And I'm like, how do you do as many hours as you've done today in those sandals. I I couldn't. I I'm good. Like I see I see a few like a, a few photographers and video and videographers wearing just all black, which is I think that's yeah. fine. That's yeah, fine. Totally but I've fine. seen I've in the past couple of weeks I've seen a couple that have been wearing like very bright colors and just kind of casual. Yeah. And it was a formal wedding. And, and I saw a guest actually for um, a formal wedding a few weeks ago walk in with jeans and it made me question if he was actually a guest. Yeah. Because I was like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but I've also seen, you know, when I had my planning team, we wore all black. It was yeah. no spaghetti strap kind of stuff. If you had spaghetti straps, you But it's like all jacket. black like business just, casual. Yeah, that's it. But I've seen it, but I've, and, and I, and I know I keep harping on like photo and video, but yeah. that's who I see wearing this yeah. type, like. You know who always looks nice? Me, thank you. Of course. <laughs> What's up? Seaway. Seaway oh, and Rachel oh, always Bill. look so nice. Yeah, Bill from Ying Photography. Um, I actually, they have just, a set outfit, and they oftentimes, if they don't do this on purpose, I can count probably on two hands how many times they've matched their socks and shoes and their pants. And I'm like, y'all must be married. Yeah, well, they are. Because <laughs> they do it all the time. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I just noticed that. I'm like, That's you guys, fine. Well, and it's, it's funny because I noticed, I saw him post on social media, I think it was on Facebook, that he like had on a full suit on for oh yeah for one of his He's weddings. He's actually dressed up in like um like uh, some anime outfit once too. Okay. For a wedding, like he wore the cape. Like I, he's probably gonna kill me calling it a cape, but the cape, the jacket, <laughs> whatever they wear. But yeah, he got really into character and did that one. Yeah. So. so I mean, that's like if if the wedding or the event calls for it, yeah, dress yeah. you know dress according accordingly. Yeah. But all right, so like question photo and video people. <laughs> <laughs> what's up Hi. I mean, it's like they just got like they just came from home or like they were lounging on the couch like, hey i got a wedding today let me just grab my camera out the door right like they're so like lackadaisical about it but i feel like they should definitely blend in i definitely don't think they should be wearing like ivories and like you know i mean nude colors yeah and black but not bright colors i feel like that it wasn't say bright but like they were wearing colors and it was very casual it wasn't, it wasn't even business casual it was oh. like let's Ca- let's just be casual. Yeah. Let's I'm, just go I'm, out. We're yeah. going to go to the store. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go shopping. Right. <laughs> yeah. A little I, different. Um, so I was just, I'm just curious about that. It's um, a good question to ask. And, and it's, it just seems to be photo and video. Yeah. I don't, I don't happen to see, uh, I know my photo yeah. booth team, my attendants, they, they dress, you know, either yeah. in a, in a TLS polo. So it's like business casual or they dress nice or yeah. they're in all black. Um, catering always is on well, point. Catering's typically on point. Um, there are there have been some questionable outfit outfits by planner assistants that I've seen like a crop top recently, and I was like, okay. um, you, mm. trying to impress somebody. I mean, it was she <laughs> she was she was blessed. Okay, and so it was a little <laughs> a little like when you're bending over and you're doing the chairs and you're doing the things like that's not. So when I plan 
planned. I did like tank top and yoga pants and, you know. The, Cover up. Yeah. yeah. And the and the shorts or, or the sneakers before a guest arrives. Oh, like, sure. That's, yeah. That's during setup because I'm I'm like I'm an athlete. I'm in, and right. I, yeah, athletic I have wear, TLS right? uh, dry but, fits yes, and before like before guests arrive, it's a whole like two second like you know, Superman mm-hmm. and the telephone booth kind of thing. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever I see like the bridal party, <laughs> I'll be setting up like I have my again my, my TLS like dry fits. I'm in a th- I'm in I'm in a, I'm in athleisure. Yeah. So I'm comfortable because there's just a lot of equipment that yeah. we're hauling around. And then I'll go and change and I'll come back out. And I, no joke, more often than not, I'll have <laughs> the bridal part, like bridesmaids or groomsmen, like, are you the DJ? Weren't you just, right? you dress up nice. I'm yeah. like, thank you. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> I've seen them like walk in or they're on property while I'm like out there sweating buckets. And they're like, oh, well, you clean up quick and nice. Like, yes, this is what I've been yeah, doing for like is, 18 years. You yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm not going to be working <laughs> like this. Yep, so. this is what I'm wearing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wanted uh, to bring that up. So something to think um, about and yeah um so a couple other things before we get started How was your weekend um, oh yeah My let's weekend. talk about you boo let's talk about me <laughs> I talk because about you did me. a wedding this weekend that i'm still uh, uh low-key actually i'm not even low-key i'm very sad that i missed this wedding it was a good one it, it was, was good. so good um, you were out there lion dancing their uh, dance was amazing their dance yeah their yeah. whole oh, yeah. thing there yeah it was Jen pretty sent me a video because she knew i was like vicariously living through her for why this were, were, were you, i was canceled you were not by, by them <laughs> uh, by, not by them <laughs> yeah Got it. yeah no past life um gotcha. but yeah megan they canceled me brandy she, <laughs> yeah Aww. but um, i mean jen filled in and she does an amazing job we're one of the oh, yeah. same but jen was awesome. i think i just missed because i know the couple and i'm yeah. friends with them and mm-hmm. so and i knew it was gonna be a party well all right so uh friday i was at lakewood ranch golf and country club oh yeah which again amy yeah, was just here yeah. last week uh, on on the show and worked with her it was fun it was good um the the actual wedding it was it was really nice so you know how all right <laughs> uh and i always um you know how you can tell like the love meter oh yeah of the couple of the couple oh, of, yeah. the, of the the guests the, like yeah, the just family yeah the, i mean just uh-huh. how things are planned and everything <laughs> and just like ah, the love meter's high right or oh i don't know about this one <laughs> I wasn't really, I you mean, weren't, you weren't, you weren't, I don't know, the guest, maybe it was just the guest. It was a, it was a much older crowd. The, the couple wasn't older. The couple was oh. probably late twenties, early thirties. Yeah. But the guests themselves were much older. Like majority of them were, were older. And I was like, that usually Ugh. doesn't happen. Like usually right. you have at least a good couple tables that are, and there was about, group. I want to say about a hundred guests. Um, maybe like, yeah, 80 to a hundred, but it was, it was much older. Mm. It was, I would probably say the average was probably like 50, 60, was 70. Was there alcohol? There was. And the, the wedding itself was, eh. eh. Um, which made me think about like, what am I doing wrong? But Yeah, because it makes you question. Like when you don't get that vibe, I've had that where I'm like, okay, everything's perfect. And every, I'm, I'm not feeling the love. Yeah. I'm not feeling, it's not in the air. And I'm not like okay, what's wrong? Like something's off. Yeah. You, you just never get into the vibe. And at the end of that, you're like, mm-hmm. okay, but, so um, that happened. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, and then this is the second week in a row, which I'm seeing this as maybe a new trend. So we're just going to turn in the trends. You know, what's trending? Cause we always do a, a segment of what's trending. Yeah. Um, t-shirt tosses. A what? A t-shirt toss. A what? A t-shirt toss. <laughs> they have <laughs> pre-made t-shirts. That? Like little giveaways for their guests. Like and you're at a sports game. Like and you're talking? no joke. Yes, no. this is the second weekend at in a row at, at the country club. At, it was done um, at Esplanade at Lakewood Ranch Which the is week really prior. Nice. Right, and Lakewood Ranch is really nice. Yeah, Lakewood. Yeah. Both of them are really nice. That I wouldn't expect people to be throwing t-shirts. Well, they were. They were. Um, they were nice. I mean, they. I don't know. The one. <laughs> prior so the weekend prior at, at esplanade yeah uh, they did a t-shirt toss and it was a literally a shirt like a white t-shirt and it had the hashtag um it's hammer time oh because last name and yeah. of course i played hammer mc time. hammers yeah. um uh-huh. can't touch this yeah. when they did the t-shirt toss okay of course um so that made sense um but yeah it was just a t-shirt and so like you know a lot of the guests were getting just like these shirts that said it's hammer time hashtag I mean, it's hammer time was it like five or ten like how many the one at out? esplanade what there was a lot oh gosh there was a lot and they had so Is and some of like take on a favor it's almost? kind of yeah kind of in a sense uh-huh. yeah um and then this past weekend at lakewood ranch 
I don't know what the shirts were, but I just happened to see a box next to my DJ booth. I'm like, oh, this is the <laughs> second time in a row and only the second time I've ever done it, but like two weekends in a row that this is happening. It's really weird. But it was cool. I got yeah. video of it, so I'll post it on social. I mean, but. I feel like if you're a big sports fan and you go to a lot of games and you go to a lot of sporting events and you're always going for that free tea or maybe you're like, it's, a, it's an inside joke where there's too many t-shirts in his closet or her yeah. closet or whatever. Let me toss out some of these t-shirts. I can see that. It's just... I've uh, never heard or seen that. So yeah. we'll have neither to keep have an I. Eye on it, Two weeks. To... Well, and I was like, wait a minute, again. And uh, but this <laughs> one, they only had too. they only had like 10, 10 shirts oh. that they gave out. And one oh, I felt salty. There was there was a little there was a, a little kid there. He was probably like five. And one of the groomsmen put him on his shoulders when it came time for the t-shirt toss. I'm like, this is going to end badly. Oh gosh. I was just like, I'm like videotaping. Were they shooting it from a cannon. No, they're just throwing just it tossing out. It. Just okay. tossing it. A little literal t shirt toss. Okay. So, um, but yeah, the little kid got the shirt and nice. I was just waiting for them to just you know drop it. He was him, so excited. Oh, yeah. He was He's super excited. He's going to keep that forever and ever and say, mm -hmm. I got this at so and so's wedding when I was yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. What else? It's a good so, memory. So that was at Lakewood Ranch. And also at that wedding, they had a, a live painter. Oh, we did talk about that recently. Yeah. Live, and live it was. Live painting is so good. So it was, I mean, this person. I don't. I didn't get her name. I don't know what what her company is, um, but Amy, who was uh -huh. here last week from Lakewood Ranch, was trying to get her for her wedding in <laughs> September. She's like, I'm booked already. Oh yeah. And she's like the only one in t like, like one of like maybe two that are in town, like uh -huh. local to Sarasota and local Bradenton. Sarasota. Yeah, I think there's some I mean, in Tampa, St. Yeah. Pete, but yeah. Um, but that was that's really cool. So that's like that's I want to say that's kind of like on the upward trend of doing a live painter because yeah. I've seen it a few times. Um, Let's see here. So that was, yeah, that was uh, Friday. And then Saturday I was at Mixon's. Yeah. Um, for a couple that I know pretty well. They yeah. actually met, well, they came to a lot of my line dance lessons yes. when and I would I teach. I could tell. They had a good teacher. They Well, you know. You know. And um, <laughs> they had, gosh, they had like close to 200 guests. Yep. I was not expecting it. I was not expecting it to be that big. Oh, yeah. And it, like it was, there was a lot. They had a coffee uh-huh they had Both um bar truck and uh, uh cornerstone cornerstones food truck. uh f bar truck which was awesome and then their their food truck their pizza truck pizza oh my truck. god it's so good i know i shout out to cornerstone their food is absolutely <sighs> you know, amazing their pizza and and i learned this their pizza is so good and they said yeah we don't even put any sauce on it there's no sauce oh wait there's how no how did i not know that like this there's no just... sauce you're right. There isn't. It's so good. Okay. And it's the, people better not sleep on Cornerstone no. and they book up quick. So reach out to Cornerstone Shannon. In here. Yeah. We'll bring in, bring in Joel and Shannon, but, um, they did my husband's birthday party. They did my birthday mm -hmm. party. They've done, um, several events for us. And I just love that they love food and flavors. Like when they make yeah. their charcuterie board, when oh, I first saw their very first one, I was like, what in the world? is this yeah and they like make their own pickles and they soak them and they make their own juices for their cocktails and they really go that extra degree so if people are like oh the price well you're getting what you you're getting more than what you paid for mm -hmm. because they love food and they actually started out by being a food prep company oh. for bodybuilders so they had to contour their food to dietary restrictions food restrictions and that's how they kind of started so everything was fresh everything was it had to be fresh and had to be they're not shopping cisco they're they're literally oh, yeah. going out and getting all their ingredients and making them so and yes, their, their food truck their them. pizza truck is just so and they cool. are on point too like they're they so they just get it done and um and, and they, they feed offer. their vendors. So that's yes, cool. they do. That's <laughs> a good point. They feed us well. They yeah. do. So, yeah. um, so and, and shout out to Megan and Brian. Yeah, Megan and Brian, congrats to you guys. Um, and they actually, they had a friends themed photo booth. I saw the ending photo where it well, said. Well, it, was, it wasn't like, they just had like the orange uh, couch. Oh, okay. Like yeah, lookalike. Yeah. The couch. Um, but I did see an end photo where it said something oh. about um, that day that Brian and Megan got married or Probably, that, yeah. that episode so or something. The, um, yeah. the one, it's called, oh, the, yeah. it's because, yeah, Friends is always the one where Rachel does this. Yeah. And, or, so this one was the one that Megan and Brian got married. Yeah. However, during the ceremony, this, this was hilarious. And the officiant did not do this on purpose either. Oh. He was like, Brian, do you take Nicole? And he was like, wait a minute. <laughs> 
and everybody's just silent. And Megan, the bride, is oh, just she, like, she's she's a whip, so I'm sure she. Oh yeah, she was like, and then and then the officiant, like there was silence, and the officiant's like, hold on. The names are still from my last wedding, and everybody <laughs> went. I mean, it was too funny. But in Friends, if anybody watches Friends, uh, at the episode where oh. Ross is getting married to uh, the British, um, what's her name? I think I need to rewatch all of my no, Friends I, episodes. Oh my gosh! Anyway, where he's getting married for the second time, uh huh, and Rachel's there. Oh, it's not the Rachel. Um, gosh, I can't think of her name. Somebody's gonna clue us in. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look it up. Hold on. <laughs> I heard there was rock, paper, scissors to see who did their vows first. Yep. yep. Like <laughs> that was cute. They had some really Emily. cute touches. Sorry. All right. Emily. When when uh Ross was getting married to Emily. Yeah. Uh Rachel was there and now Ross was the one that said the wrong name, not the officiant. Oh. So Ross was like, I Ross take the Rachel instead of Emily and that's where it all went went haywire in the show so of course I wrote that down yeah and I was like I'm going to use this during introductions so I was like you know you know welcome everybody you know we're in celebration of of Brian and Nicole I'm sorry Brian and, and it was a, at that point <laughs> yeah. it was um it was a running joke it was a running joke and they all laughed um but yeah the, the wedding itself was I mean it was awesome that's yeah, great. it was a good time. Um, they also had a their uh, Megan's grandfather, I believe, was the flower dude. Nice. And he came out to um, sharp dressed man, <laughs> and he was bopping like he was he going was down. There, huh? Oh yeah, it was yeah, it was fun. I feel like they've been listening to our podcast. I mean, I don't know. Like we really like hit all these pointers at some yeah. point, <laughs> or maybe we've been listening to their wedding plans. Maybe I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, their yeah. wedding was was a lot of fun. Yeah. So congrats to them. Um, yeah, they did a, a special first dance. They did yes. a choreographed dance where they had two different songs. We actually mixed it live. We didn't even have it pre-made. Oh, no? They Look just told us, hey, it was we you need... and Carlos, right? It was me, Carlos, and then he brought an assistant um, like for setup. So it was the three of us, and we just knocked. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, because they went like slow first dance into a faster kind of line faster. dance, the two of them. And then they went into a really fast line dance that and I then all of a sudden everybody. i saw her hand go up and i was like and then all these people come to the dance floor to do it with them and, and then I you did. jumped on the dance oh, yeah, floor. of course i, I taught like, them the dance nice i like this yeah so this of course I, and they i wasn't i don't i wasn't invited to be on the dance floor but, but i was like well i, I know mean, it I think you should. <laughs> i'm gonna do it so but yeah that was That's good that was um that was fun so like a themed photo booth is really cool that could be like a new trend yeah a themed photo booth but yeah t-shirt tosses they they didn't do a t-shirt toss no. But the, the one that's prior. Fun. But yeah, so that's you that. You, do you want my what's trending now? Or are we going to go ahead and get into the nitty gritty? Well, go ahead. Well, give, you can give me one. I'll what you me got? One. Um, uh, the new type of ring that's out there since it's engagement season. Emerald. No. Oh. <laughs> it's a moissanite ring. And it is amazing because it has the same sparkle as a diamond. However, for first time purchasers or whatever, you're younger and you're still saving up your coin. Um, it's really great alternative because it costs less, but it's durable and it's a hard gemstone. So for those of us that are like in the gym and all that stuff, we're a little <coughs> probably harder on our rings than maybe other people that aren't as active. Mm -hmm. So it's a great choice because it's that. And it's also ethical and sustainable choice because it's lab grown okay but look up moissanite rings they are simply amazing they look like waterford crystal on the inside of them like all the facets so that is one of my new trends is get that bling but don't spend all that coin mm -mm. <laughs> you don't have to spend all of it send some of it okay but financial planner we need to get one in here financial sure. planner yeah for ring purchases because it's not cheap okay yeah so that's my one. I'll give you more later. All right, cool. Keep you on the edge of your seat. I like it. <laughs> um, all right, so that's that's that. That's what happened this past weekend and some yeah. what's trending uh, trending things. Um, so let's just go ahead into our. Um, we're going to go into our topic of discussion. Yeah. So you can come on in over. Uh, we've got. We're going to do. You know what, um, Brandy? I'm going to have you do the intro. Okay. So, 
Who do we have here? We have beautiful Janelle. Can you see her? Yes, we can. Yes, 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 yes. So um, this is Janelle Damrau. And so she is a licensed therapist. And um, to be exact, a licensed mental health counselor. That is what she is. LMHC. Yeah. Elemental PQRS. (laughs) But also known as a marriage counselor for all of us. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so, so it, super ahead, excited to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Um, I know uh, one of the things that we talked about in the beginning of setting up this podcast is all these different things that go into wedding planning as a couple and then the industry. So I feel like this is appropriate for the new year because engagements are happening and things. But I've also had a lot of conversations with friends of mine that are just starting to date and, um, and they're in that dating pool. So let's kind of start there, I guess. And let's talk a little bit about um, you. Tell us how you got started and what your passion is. Okay. First of all, I learned so much just now. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I got married almost 19 years ago and man, they really stepped up the wedding game. It's yes, a lot sure. different even from five years ago. I yes. imagine. Um, but yeah, thanks you guys for having me. I am an LMHC, licensed mental health counselor. Um, I have a private practice in, in the Lakewood Ranch area. Um, I got started in this. I spent the first 15 years of my career working with um, oncology patients and then moved over into um you know, working with both individuals and couples. And part of that is premarital counseling or even marriage counseling. Um, And I was saying before we even got started, oftentimes I don't see couples until there's a big issue, Mm -hmm. you know, and separation or divorce comes into the picture. So I am all about, let's tackle some of that prior to maybe even in the dating world um, so that we can Let's bring down the divorce rate. I mean, yeah, <laughs> seriously. it's at what, 50%? It's at 50%. Oh my gosh. So what suggestions do you have for those that are starting to date? Like what parameters do they set? What healthy boundaries do they set? Do they come to the table with their asks and they're like, this is what it takes for me? Like, how does that look in, in the dating world? Because like I said, I have some friends and they said it's pretty vicious out there. It is pretty vicious. Um, I would say (laughs) if you know what you need, ask for that to be met. But what I oftentimes find is that people have no clue. They might know they find the physical attractiveness. They might find some sexual chemistry, but they don't really know deep down inside what it is that they need um, in a potential spouse. Uh, So I think it's really important to explore that and understand um, like your strengths, your weaknesses, um, and then bring that into the dating, your first date. It's okay to ask for that. Yeah. Yeah, One thing that I've learned through the years <laughs> in my experiences in his, in his past relationships in my past experience. relationships and and I unfortunately uh, am part of that 50% um, however uh, my and I hate I hate saying ex-wife but um, she and I are still really good friends and yeah. I feel like I mean I always have to say that um, but I I feel like it's because of the counseling that we went to unfortunately it was at the end of our relationship and um, you know we did we did marriage counseling and uh, I mean, we went to, yeah, we, we did a lot of therapy, but at that point, like we grew stronger, mm-hmm. but we understood at that point that we were growing apart at the same time. Um, yeah. so like along that, along the lines is, you know, communication is huge. Yes. Communication is huge. And like you just said, kind of explaining or like, uh, telling your partner the things that you need in, in like in a relationship or, uh, yeah, just, I mean, explaining everything like, that way yeah. there's n- like how no th- you connect best. Like yeah. I always explain it like, okay, <clears throat> I, I have a well and here it is. And it needs to be, I have a love tank. Yeah. So you got to put gas in your car to get somewhere. You got to put love into the relationship. And we all tend to, to love differently. Right. Yes. And so I, you know, the way I love is different than somebody, how somebody will love me back. But I feel like, you know, you should definitely communicate to that person how you like to be loved. Yeah. And what are some ways that people can figure that out before they get too far into a relationship and realize like, oh, this is not. And then you're asking that person to make all these changes and then it seems like it's harder. Right. So, um, you know, one of the first things that I do when I meet a couple and this test is 
an old test, but it's very useful. Five love languages, right? Mm -hmm. Let's figure out what your love language is. Yeah. Because so oftentimes, for example, mine is gifts. And I love to give people, like my husband, I love to give him gifts. He's like, Janelle, that's not my love language <laughs> at all. That, that's yours. That's mine, yeah. right? And we always, well, we don't always, but a lot of people tend to do that. We'll give somebody our own love language. Mm -hmm. um, but understand what your potential partner's love language is so you can meet that. That's one of the ways you fill their tank up. Yeah. Uh, we all come into relationships with a set of expectations. We may not even be re uh, have a realization of that, but if we can understand what our expectations are and then verbalize that mm -hmm. um, and understand that nobody's perfect. We yeah. all come into relationships with baggage. Right. Mm -hmm. um, my husband came into our marriage. He was married for nine months and got divorced. She walked out on him. Oh. So he had some significant baggage to work through. Sure. Um, and, but met me there shortly thereafter. Right. So now I'm coming into the picture and there's <clears throat> just a whole host of things. So to when work you say through. like the five love languages, cause I've, yes. I mean, I've, I have the book Right. I've, Same. I've, and right. Yep. I highly recommend getting <laughs> yes. it if you don't just, I mean, even if you just like read snippets of it here yeah. and there just to find out, you know, what you're, so when you read that, typically when, you know, you figure out like what your top love language is right. or your top two or three, whatever it is, or how they fall into place, is that typically how you love somebody? Like, like you said, gifts is, is yours. So by you giving gifts, if you were to receive gifts, is that how you receive love as well? Is that how... So my top two are quality time and gifts. Okay. So if my husband wants to fill my love tank, take me out to dinner. Uh -huh. <laughs> Give me a gift. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Done. And, right, and, right? and you and you feel full. I feel full. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mine's mine is um, uh, acts of service. Yes. And physical touch. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's um, because you know I again with myself. Uh, very busy uh, uh, with, you know, working here at the TV station and then also having the entertainment company. And so if I have somebody that helps me out just a little bit, at, like even at the house, and I don't expect it, but like yeah. I'm constantly going, or if you just, an act of service of, I, I don't even know how hey, to. Hey, I picked up your dry cleaning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's or just me anything too. that makes my life easier. Right. Yes. I'm act of, acts of service and I'm words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. So don't gaslight me. <laughs> be genuine and be real like but i also don't want it overly abundant like it needs to be like real yeah. it can't just be because you know that like oh let me tell her this today yeah you know so it has to be genuine and not forced sure. um but yeah make my life easier like mm -hmm. that's my husband knows okay hey i did x y and z i'm like oh, thank god yes yeah. oh i don't know how i was gonna get all that done right so yeah same. and and uh, yeah again like if yeah like hey i and I don't ever expect any of this because I, I do it myself. Like yeah, I have no problem. Yeah. But and like, we have a problem asking. Oh, I have a horrible time yes, asking for asking any help. Asking for someone to do it. We just want them to know to right. do it. I want you to know <laughs> that I want. I would love for you to help me. <laughs> right. And I don't want to tell you that. That's right. Where, where this is where communication kind of comes into. Yeah. It's like, okay, here's here's my deck. Just lay it you know, all out. Here's, here's my cards. Even as a single person, you know, they, you know, start to learn these things and about yourself it, yeah right. about yourself because i feel like if you and my mama told me this a long time ago i can be bad all by myself so mm -hmm. if you don't love yourself first i don't really know how you can really love as much as you want to somebody else so you got to work through that and i feel like you know being in counseling myself and therapy and whatnot that you really need to do that on your own and then also in the relationship too so i feel like it's you know self-help too yeah well that makes sense brandy because if yours is words of affirmation and your partner is giving you oh you look so beautiful this that and the next if you don't feel that about yourself it's really hard to believe that when somebody else is telling yeah. you that yeah I, yeah, I've definitely struggled with that because I was just raised in that world where I was always told those things just because my parents were told to tell me to build my self-esteem. So it's harder for me to believe those those things. So it's also me letting those walls down. So what are some things that couples can do during that engagement process? Like what does that counseling look like? What, um, How can they build it stronger before they say I do? So uh, for... In my practice, if I see couples for premarital counseling, I usually tell them to plan roughly six sessions or so. Um, and we, I hand out 
multiple worksheets, multiple questions that they can work with each other during the week, even mm -hmm. just to build communication. You'd be fascinated how many people are getting ready to walk down the aisle and haven't had the discussion about, are we having kids? Are we not? And that is a huge ticket item yeah. in a marriage. And how do we handle finances? Exactly. And, yeah. um, how do we deal with conflict? Well, he usually walks out and then I'm just stuck here or vice versa. And, you know, that's obviously a very unhealthy relationship pattern. So I usually say, let's plan six sessions. And in those sessions, we cover number one communication. I'm glad that you had shared that because it is by far one of the best tools that you can use in your life, in all aspects of your life. Um, and that's really number one. Number two, we go through uh, conflict. How do we do conflict management? Um, how do we fight? Do we fight well? Do we not? Uh, do we have an anxious partner? Do we have an avoidant partner? What is a a good fight? Yeah, how do you fight <laughs> how fair? Do you, how do you fight well? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I've seen it done. Um, I think it's okay to argue. You're going to have conflict. You're taking two people that are very different. However, um, I think that it's really mutually respecting one another. So for example, if I have an opinion about something allowing me to share that opinion, and then if my husband disagrees with me, okay, it's okay to disagree. Can we find a way to meet in the middle? Maybe we can't. And maybe I'm choosing to say, okay, I'm going to let you go through with this and see what happens. Or he's going to say, okay, let's see how it goes. And it's really just finding that balance. Trust is another big part. And that will come in with conflict management too. How much do we trust our partners? Okay. And so we've got communication, how to fight well, conflict, <laughs> conflict <laughs> resolution. And what are some other... Um, uh, big one, intimacy. Guys. Oh, yeah. It is huge. Um, and I'm not just talking about physical intimacy, although that is obviously a large part of it, but we're talking about emotional intimacy. Mm -hmm. How do we connect with sharing feelings and needs? Uh, we're talking about mental intimacy. Can we challenge one another? Intellectual intimacy. Can we mm. challenge one another? Um, we're talking about uh, even exploration intimacy. What are our dreams? What are our goals? What are our hopes for the future? Um, how many couples, right? Well, well we just want to plan this amazing wedding and we want to have a great time. Well, what's after right. the wedding? Yeah. Yeah. That will go. <laughs> <laughs> what happens next? Yeah. Um, and you've got to be able to share those hopes, the goals, the dreams with one another. Yeah. One thing that I've learned over the years is, is again, you know, having that that emotional connection with somebody is huge. Yeah. Um, I mean, you think you may have it, and but uh, I think the communication is really what kind of brings that emotional connection together. Like being able to talk and having those those, I mean, just emotional conversations yeah. and learning about each other and um, not superficial, like you know, on the top layer. No, conversations. Getting like, deep. get deep, like yeah. get, get deep like with it. Very, very deep with those conversations and be vulnerable with each other is very important. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to the conflict, I feel like also that um, not holding that conflict against the other person, like, you know, you can't be upset that they feel a certain way or they think a certain way, like you can't be offended by that. So because they have, they have their feelings and they have the reasons why they have those feelings. And yeah. so, and I find, something. I find as a, as a male. Uh, <laughs> the only one in the room. Yeah. Well, and this is something that, you know, I, I struggled with was communication with Megan. Um, this is, you know, something that um, that was tough for me. Um, and I find that this is, you know, tough for a lot of guys too. And Janelle, you can kind of say, you know, it, w whether I'm, I, I'm onto something or not. Or, But I find that, um, you know, if, if, as a male of the relationship, if we were to express our feelings of something, it's it's been oftentimes turned around, and then now, the our partner is the, um, what's the word? Dominant one. No, no, no. Oh. The uh, victim. Victim. Mm, yeah. And now, because we just expressed our feelings of how we were feeling about something, now they're the victim, and then we feel bad. And now it's been like reversed onto us. Oh, yeah. And so that, I mean, that ha that's happened to me in, in past relationships um, in many relationships to the where a point where I'm just like, you know what? I'm just not going to speak. I'm not going to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to communicate. Especially when it's so faux pas for men to share their feelings right. and to be emotional. So like, what are your, like, what are your thoughts on that? 
It's very common. Okay. You're not alone. All right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not a good thing. No, but, but it's, it's, you know. I think that it's important. Um, I think what you said too, Brandy, is that it is, it's the stereotypical role too, right? These like male and female roles. And I think um, men are taught oftentimes, well, we don't share feelings. We just keep going and we keep going and we keep going. And um, unfortunately and sadly, that's kind of really unhealthy. We all have emotions and feelings. It's important to be able to separate from your partner and say, hey, I am taking this on. Um, I know you shared this with me and I am taking it in. I feel like I'm taking a little bit personally. And what do I do about that? Um, and then for your partner to say, well, that, okay, that's really not my intention. I'm just really trying to share with you. So really kind of even getting deeper into the communication. Um, but again, that's built through trust. It takes time. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. overnight. And I feel like um, oftentimes how we handle stress and emotions and things comes from how we were raised. So mm -hmm. there may have been a household where you weren't allowed to have big feelings, where you weren't allowed to have, you know, those big conversations or those heart to heart conversations. And it was just like you need to be seen and not felt or heard. And so it's been kind of stifled down. And so sometimes I think it definitely is deeper and the partner needs to know that, OK, this stems from. Like, and then how do we want to raise our children? Are right. they a lot like, do we encourage big feelings? Do we have, and how do we, how, are, how do <laughs> yeah. we express that? And how do we give them that freedom to talk and have emotions and, you know, then also self-soothe and calm themselves down if need be? Like, how does that look like? What does that look like? Yeah, we in our household, now I have two kids, one's a teenager and one is almost going to be a teenager. And we have family meetings. Every Sunday night, we gather around because, A, we just have a week that we've got to get through and plan who's going where. But B, True. what's going on? Tell me, like, what's going on with your friends? Sometimes they're great about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat <laughs> it. Sometimes they're like, get me the heck out of here. Um, but then my husband and I kind of connect after that and say, all right, how did that go? What do we need to work on um, from here on out? Again, just enhancing communication. Yeah. yeah that's I, feel like good. That, I feel like that's the biggest thing that I've learned over the years is, Communication, like that's, that's been my biggest downfall. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I've been really trying to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I feel like it has worked pretty well. Your and, feelings matter too. Uh, well, they do. <laughs> they but, do. But, but I mean, everybody's feelings matter. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I just, like I've found that anytime I were to say something, it would be turned around. They would become the victim. I'm the, I'm the bad person now. So now I'm the one that's like feeling bad for telling you how I fe felt. Meanwhile, when, you still have those other feelings that you meanwhile, have. Meanwhile, I still have with. those same feelings. Yeah. And, but now I feel bad that I have those feelings. Yeah. And, uh, I just feel oftentimes like with, you know, on the female side, um, you know, the female would, uh, express their feelings. And now the guy would have to try and make them better or make carry you know, that burden, yeah. carry that burden. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but <laughs> we get we, you. Yeah, we have something in our house too. Do we want to? Uh, my husband always asks, "Do you want me just to listen, or do you want me to try to fix it and find you an answer?" Oh, that's a great yeah. question. I feel like I should use that more. Yeah. Because if I'm going to share my feelings, I nine times out of ten don't want you to fix it. Right. Like I, I just want to be heard. I just want to be heard. I want to go through it. I want to cry. I want to yell. I want to do my thing, and I just need you to be like, "I support you." Yeah. Like right. um, it's okay. You got this, That's you know, exactly words right. of affirmation come really good right at yeah. that point. Um, for the guys that are out there now that we're, you know, cause it's, you know, us females and, you know, and just, and Tim in, in <laughs> here with us, but for the guys, how do they get to that vulnerable, like without, with still being the man of the house and, mm -hmm. you know, and being that dominant personality or, you know, if it's same sex marriage or same sex personality, like uh, partners how do you take that that masculine role um that you want to play how do you put that on the table and still honor yourself and and be like hey that's a guy or a person that i would want to date because and they're not like see because i feel like the the faux pas is that emotions are make you look weak so how do they express that and still be that dominant personality well, that's a good question. I think that for men, it is definitely the faux pas that emotions make men appear weaker. And yet, um, 
I don't know. I, I feel like show me the female that if her husband or friend even is coming to them and saying, hey, I feel this certain way that's going to come back and say, man, he really appeared weak to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think it takes practice. I think it takes something called effective listening, which is if um, even you and I, Brandy, or you and I, Tim, are having a conversation, um, I'm really taking the time allowing you instead of preparing my rebuttal or preparing my response mm -hmm. i'm really sitting and listening to you mm -hmm. um there's some great marriage um extraordinaires out there i'll call them john and julie gottman and john they're in their 70s now but they started the gottman institute which is one of the top ranked marriage institutes and he says that he will sit and take a notepad and write down everything that his wife says to him and one time it took almost two hours and he wrote down every single thing so that he wouldn't miss something um, and then from there he's able to come back to her and say hey I heard through that that you are feeling x y and z um, so Tim if you were to sit down with a significant other and say to her hey I'm just kind of feeling overwhelmed right now somebody that's mature and comfortable within themselves would say might say, hey, how can I help you with that? Or mm -hmm. tell me more about that. Like, let's talk about that. You know, but that is a big step for um, the stereotypical male role to come in and say, hey, I am feeling overwhelmed or, hey, I am feeling um, sad. Yeah. Right. Anger is the most socially accepted, acceptable emotion out mm -hmm. there. But anger is just the tip of it. There's so much that's left underneath. Yeah. So after they go through the six sessions yes. and they've graduated, yes, that's right. <laughs> what goes on from there? Should they continue with separate therapy, combined therapy? Like what does that for? Because I feel like people are like, oh yeah, I went to therapy. I'm good now. Oh yeah, we did that. We're good now. I feel it's like, like it's a never... checkbox. It's never ending. Like no. you should never, it's, it, your mental health is always something you should, should work on. So do they continue that separately or should they, should they? It, I think it depends. So it depends on what's uncovered in that six sessions, right? Mm -hmm. We do look at individual mental health, um, individual health in general, not just mental, physical, emotional health. And if I find that um, one or the other is really struggling in an area, I would probably suggest, hey, why don't you just come in a couple of sessions alone? Let's take a look at this and see. Uh, and then we go from there. I would absolutely highly recommend, even if you come to someone for pre-marriage counseling and you want to switch for marriage counseling, if something arises and you just feel something's a little bit off, get yourself a good marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. Just check in. We yeah. do that in my marriage. We just check in. Sometimes it'll we'll go three years without checking in. But if something happens, <clears throat> we at least have somebody established that knows our background. Yeah. Yeah. And then after the other question, I, I have a lot of questions. No. Yeah. Bring them on. Um, so we talked about divorce rate being 50%. So when people are on the verge of that, what are some things that they can do? And I know this is probably not a blanket for everybody. Um, what are some things that t tactics, things they can do, whether it's taking a break, whether it's what, what does that look like? Or what are some things that people can try before um, getting to that point? Yeah, I think it depends on how far into that point that they are. Okay. Um, I do work with a uh, couples that are going through a period of separation. And okay. so we look at what it looks like to separate or have that period of separation successfully. So that might look like, okay, we're going to take 90 days. We're going to separate. But in between that 90 days, we're going to meet maybe once every three weeks, maybe once a month. And we're going to talk about, and then either I would see both of them individually, or I would um, send one of them to some, you know, a colleague of mm -hmm. mine and then you know, see the other one individually, and maybe the four of us would meet together um, once every month or every three weeks or so. Yeah. If you're at the point of divorce, I do see this happen so frequently. I can truly say I have seen people at the point of divorce that have not gone through with it based on counseling. Um, but it takes a lot of work. Yeah. You know, marriage is tough. I mean, yeah, it, it is. is not easy. Mm -mm. Um, it can be exhausting and very frustrating at times. You're taking two totally different people, broken people that come with their own baggage and you're trying to figure it out. Um, so it's really, it's not even so much just, just 
do both partners want to put in the work? Um, but do both partners want to put in the work? Yeah. That's how yeah. often I now, see. When you said yeah. that, like that 90 day separation, yes. um, and you reckon, you know, is that a recommendation of, you know, of you as the, the therapist to like say, you know, I recommend that you guys take this, this 90 day separation, but do they still like, do they take yeah, each other on dates? Yeah, like, do how date? does that, how, what do they still, do they date each other? Do they still see each other? Is it a daily basis thing? Do they still talk? Like, do they live separate or just in one's in the upstairs, one's in the bottom? Well, I feel like the, <laughs> if you're separating, it, from, it should yeah. be like you guys are Out of living the house. separate. Yeah. Yes, that's ideal, actually. If you are in a period of separation, that you would actually be living in separate residences. Um, that doesn't always happen. I yeah. have seen people say one's upstairs, one's downstairs, etc. That would make things worse, it's, I feel, It's very personally. complicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's messy. Can you imagine morning coffee and breakfast time? My roommate's upstairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's a silent yeah. in the yeah. morning. That, like, I just okay, feel... I'll take the kitchen for the first 30 minutes. You take the kitchen right. for the... That's just too much. I don't. I, I just don't feel like that's a separation. I feel like yeah. you are living apart and now you are... Uh, on eggshells. You're on eggshells, but you're just like... You become bitter. Yeah. Um, or you... Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, do they date? I would, I would <laughs> highly recommend it. Uh, I would recommend it... Maybe once a week, once every couple weeks to get back together. I also recommend if um, you're in counseling, record your counseling sessions. If you are in that period of separation, record the session hmm. so the other person can listen and hear if progress is being made. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people don't like to do that, um, but I, it's highly, highly recommended. And I think because you're more vulnerable with your therapist at that point without having to say it again. So say mm -hmm. you're just like, exactly. oh, I, I can't, I can't say these things. Okay. Here's a recording. I'm going to walk away. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> here's, here's my <laughs> passive aggressive way, but not really my passive way of communicating in this moment because yeah. I can't say like, these things yeah because I'm, I'm being open right. i'm being open yeah. like i like to write things like i i'm i'm better at like i'll send you I'll, okay mm -hmm. let me put this into words oh yeah and then read it to you or email it to you or text it i'll have my people um, contact your people <laughs> exactly like <laughs> just just telegraph that over um but yeah recording the sessions is important so when you go on a date though what does that look like or is, is it just like a simple like i think it's just a regular date sim right? simple date. yeah i mean there's no rhyme or reason for what you might choose to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe there is in some capacity, but it could just be going out to dinner. It could be going to grab coffee, even if it's still very, um, a highly tense relationship. Okay. We're just going to go to the local coffee shop and sit for an hour together. Yeah. Um, Tim, something like if the sessions are recorded, let's say you hear that back, right. And you start to feel like, oh, I've got to take all this on. That's something then if you write that out, you know, if you were to write that out for yourself, like, okay, I'm choosing not to take this on. This is just this person speaking. Mm -hmm. That might help to getting to a different yeah. level of vulnerability. Yeah. And so are there books? Are there like, what are some key books where you're like, all right, these are my top for those that are dating, and these are my top for those that are. No, they're all the books. All the books. <laughs> Read everything, people. That's what she's saying. <laughs> the podcasts, all the things, right? You know, I'm big on boundaries. Um, so there are some really great boundary books out there. Um, there's um, Good Boundaries and Goodbyes. There is just the, it's literally called Boundaries. Um, there's a good uh, therapist that sits in New York City. Her name is Nicole LaPera, um, and she wrote the book, How to Do the Work. And so if you're bringing in issues from your past or issues from childhood, I know we spoke about that a little bit, she does a great job of unpacking all of that. She's also on Instagram under the holistic psychologist. She is phenomenal. If I can tell you anyone to follow, go okay. follow her. She's go got do five that. plus million followers. Do it. Um, but she really does a great job about talking about emotional maturity, about how we grew up in households, about any trauma that we may not have uncovered and what we bring into a relationship. Speaking of um, maturity, <laughs> it's been said that guys take longer yes. to get to that point. So how do you bridge that gap? So say, you know, you're 25, they're 28, but it feels like they're 12 and you're 28. And so how do you, how do you bridge that maturity level and kind of meet them where they are without getting frustrated in the process? 
I think if you're choosing um, that person as your partner, you're choosing them, right? So whether that looks like they're, listen, when we were, when my husband and I were first married, he would stay up and play video games (laughs) all night long. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to bed alone. But luckily I don't need, well, I do need quality time, but not necessarily when I'm trying to sleep. So um, (laughs) it kind of worked for us. Um, There is a different level of maturity, but I chose him, right? I made that commitment to him. Mm -hmm. And um, that was not a surprise to me going in luckily. So I was like very accepting of what he needed to decompress. And that was his time to decompress. there definitely is a maturity level difference, um, but that doesn't mean that that's a negative thing. I yeah. think society views it as a negative thing, and I don't always think that's the case. When kids come into the picture, it's a great thing. There are some wonderful, amazing dads out there that get on the ground and play with their kids yeah. nonstop, and it is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and it's I don't highly attractive for any single woman out there, too, by the way. <laughs> single dads, I mean, I think that's that's an attractive trait. So speaking of kids... What if they have children that they're bringing into the relationship? How do you have those conversations with that significant other? And also because, I mean, Ashton, my son, was mm-hmm. eight months old when I met my husband. So we did, uh, he he had to come in and it was like, okay, I'm me, but I also have a child. So I don't need you to be a parent at this moment because we're just trying this out for right now. But then when it got serious, it's like, okay, how did we set those parameters to say, okay, yes, you can discipline them. This is what that looks like. And how does that, how do you work with that? Especially, I mean, he was eight months. So how do you do that when they're older and they're kind of set in their ways? Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest challenges is blending families together without a doubt. Um, There's no uh, structure for exactly how that should be done for every single family. Of course. I think it differs from family to family, but that is where each incoming partner should probably have their boundaries set of what they're comfortable with, what they're not, what they expect from their another incoming partner to handle with the kids, to not handle with the kids. And those are discussions, again, surprisingly, people don't have before they put a ring on somebody's finger. Yeah. It's fascinating to me because maybe to us, it's like, this is a no-brainer. Yeah. But people are really like, well, let's just stay away from that topic and we'll just make it work when it happens. And then they're surprised when it's not working out. Yeah, because I still feel, and Greg would attest to this, that there's still times where he doesn't feel comfortable like disciplining, like, okay, is this, is this where I, can I, and, and what does that look like? If your partner's not allowing that, or they've got set ways of doing that, how do you, how do you come together on that discipline level when your expectation of blending the family is, Hey, I was raised this way. This is kind of how I would like to raise my child. Well, I've been raising my child this way. So how do you put those together? This is why kids are one of the top reasons <laughs> that, yeah. might argue. <laughs> top. Money, kids, yeah, <laughs> sex, yeah, it's all yeah. in there. Um, I think coming to the table again with your set of expectations, um, the other partner coming to the table with their set of expectations, maybe discussing with the counselor, how can we find a um, – meeting of the middle. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. Sometimes it's not possible and you are going to argue there is going to be conflict. Mm -hmm. And maybe at one time, um, for example, Brandy, you try your way. Maybe at one time your husband tries his way and see maybe what worked, what didn't. Yeah. Um, And that's hard when you're coming in with your own child, right? And it's also working with the child to say, okay, sure. This person is, is you're not always going to like them just like you don't always like mom or dad or who, you know, if it's depending, they're going to discipline you or they're, they're going to tell you no. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, this is their home or whatever. This is the expectation. So meeting with the children as well is, is definitely important. I feel like, and just kind of like, like you do those family meetings, that would be really great. I think for any kind of blended family. Yeah. And I think giving the other person permission and saying, Hey, this is how we were doing it. It seemed to be working. How do you feel about that? Can we head in the same direction? What would you change? Yeah. Communicate. Coming back. Communication. All communication. <laughs> All about that. <laughs> yeah. So what questions do you have, Tim? Well, I, I mean, uh, along- I mean, I mean, yeah, we're, I have, I have one wedding left on my list to plan. So <laughs> <laughs> trying to, trying to see where this guy's going. <laughs> oh boy. Well, actually I, I do have a question uh, that I wrote it down. Um, when it comes to like premarital counseling that you do, 
uh, with your couples. Have you ever worked with a couple and then you realized, Ugh, like, <laughs> you don't know that they're right for each other. And, and you know, you don't know that they're going to work together and you don't see a future past what it is right now. They may be engaged. Yeah. But like, have you ever, like, have you worked with a couple that you're like, gosh, this, I don't think it's going to work out. And if you did, how'd you handle that? Hmm. Did you tell them? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> That's um, a good one. So it's definitely my job to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It kind of yeah. comes with sugar with coat. It. <laughs> um, I have worked with couples that I felt should take more time before getting married. Um, you know, I am not the end all be all. Yes, you should. You have my blessing. That doesn't work that way, but I can certainly make recommendations of what I see. And if I see something, I will make those recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't give everyone my recommendation to go out and get married. No, uh, I definitely say you need to take more time in these specific areas. This is what this would look like. Maybe come for some individual counseling and see where we get, but, um, or again, I had that couple that we never even talked about how many kids we wanted. I feel like it's a pretty big. Okay. So <laughs> definitely there. <laughs> We're not there yet, guys. <laughs> With the rings on the finger and I hate to break it to you. And if they don't want to come back, that's fine. Yeah. Well, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm not going to sugarcoat I, to. Yeah. Cause it's probably still going to sit in the back of their mind. Like, Oh. Maybe she was right. Well, it definitely sat in her, <laughs> in the back of her mind. I don't know about his, but yeah. they actually did not wind up getting married. So mm. just an FYI, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. At least at yeah. the point that they were at when they were in my office. Okay. I well. like that you position it that way and word it that way. Like, I think you need to spend more time mm -hmm. in these areas because, the, and I'll tell people all day, the best way to extend your budget is more time. <laughs> so I feel like time together and just working, you know. Yeah on that and in those areas, I think it gives you both permission as well. So you're not like, oh, well, she's not ready or he's not ready. It gives you both permission because I'm sure there's both of you that have areas that you need to work on right. individually and then come together. Oh, yeah, that's good. Perfect. Yeah, that was a great question. Thanks. I come with some good questions. <laughs> um, so I actually have, uh, I, I went on and I did a little bit. Actually, I just happened to see this on social media. I'm not, not going to lie. I just happened to see this and I was like, oh, this is perfect for this segment and it's 12 rules eh, rules for a happy marriage mm -hmm. and so i would like to get okay. your thoughts on it let's All do right. it and um and it's then like a this or that almost yeah, yeah almost yeah. 12 <laughs> rules for a happy marriage and then you can kind of you can add on to it okay um we'll start with number one and I, I don't think this is in any particular order but hold hands a lot physical touch that's where that would come in yeah physical so, touch uh, we do something in my house 20 second hug you're going to hug each other. You're going to hold it for 20 seconds. That's a long time. It's a long time. However, <laughs> okay. dopamine is released after 20 seconds, which is the feel good chemical in your brain. <gasps> so if you're having a rough day and somebody gives you a hug. That's for true. Seconds, Game changer. 20 second hug. I'm going to start doing that. Now, start I will say, I will say, I will say though, like, and, and don't just do like an ass out hug or That's like the right. side no, hug, like a there. full, like a, you got to like, do like the full thing and squeeze tight. Yes. Right. Hold tight. Yeah. Not like you too tight, give, but yeah, my middle son gives the best hugs. Mm. I'm just like, oof. And yes. I like, I mean, I've gotten some like really good hugs. I'm like, man, I feel like I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. That was that 20 second. That's so, right. Yeah. That was that. All right. So hold hands <laughs> a lot and then, and then add on, add on a 20 second hug. That's right. There you go. I like that. My husband and I hold hands a lot. I like to like I don't hold hands like this. I like to because this. Yeah, it's just you're much just bigger. touching. Yeah, I I hold like his, yeah, you're his like few two fingers. fingers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, but I can't like his. Hand I understand. Is so big. I get it. So, I yeah. understand. Okay, good. All right, number two. Um, never yell at one another unless the house is on fire. Okay, so <laughs> um, I I have a thought. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> I am not big on yelling in my, I did not grow up in a house that yelled. My husband grew up in a house that was a very loud. Okay. So us combining that, he, I was like, stop yelling. He's like, I'm just talking loud. I'm like, no, you're I'm not. talking loud at you. That's right. <laughs> hey, uh, did you do the laundry? <laughs> that's right. Why exactly. are you yelling at me? Right. It's just laundry. <laughs> I think that has to go a little bit too with emotional maturity. As we become more mature, we can learn to express ourselves.
themselves in more adult ways. And just you go into a business meeting, you're not going to yell at your well. boss. Well, hopefully you're not going <laughs> to yell at your boss. I don't know what kind of establishment y'all work right. at, but maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so maybe sometimes. All right, so you would agree, never yell at one another unless the house is on fire. And if the house is on fire, you're probably yelling because, they, get out of the house. Or they can't hear me and they're across the house and be like, I right. said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, number three, if one of you has to win an argument, let it be your spouse. Okay. So this goes into, um, we're reading a book right now called The Meaning of Marriage, but it talks about all about being selfish. Mm -hmm. So we're all selfish in our own ways. And what does it look like to die to self, right? And that is uplifting your partner. And so I think maybe that kind of goes along with it. Read it to me okay. again, Tim. Sure. If one of you has to win an argument, let it be your spouse. You know, that's a hard one. Because uh, if you're both doing it, like if, if I'm going by that and my partner is also going by that, then we end up on the same page. All right. So here's, here's, I'm going to go back to friends. <laughs> okay. All right. Because we talked friends. about friends earlier. Uh, and if you haven't watched Friends, you should probably watch Friends. We're really dating ourselves, but oh, we look good. I love Friends. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right. All right. So, um, uh, oh my God. Phoebe. No. Ross. Rachel. Rachel. We were on a break. No, the other two. Joey. No. The other. Chandler. Chandler. Chandler and Monica. God, wow. I was like, my wait, mind. Hold on. I, 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 I was like, wait, hold on. What so Monica one? and Chandler, they're engaged. Yes. Okay. And Monica wants this huge wedding and Chandler doesn't, but Chandler has a lot of money in the bank that he saved. Mm -hmm. And Mo and so Chandler tells her, like, I have such and such X amount of dollars available. And she's like, oh my God, that's perfect for wedding scenario A. And he's like, no, no, I'm not going to put that money towards a party. And she's like, you know, go, goes crazy. He's like, if you call a party one more time, we're not going to have a party. <laughs> <laughs> so he put his foot down. He's like, I'm not using that money for the wedding. And so she was really upset and, you know, he put his foot down, but then later on in the, in the um, episode, they come back, they have a conversation and he's like, you know what? I've realized like, I, I do want to have a wedding because they talked about, you know, their future together and how, uh, you know, he thinks about, you know, having kids and living out in the suburbs and having that white picket fence and the dog. And, and so Monica at this point is like, you know, I want that too. So, you know what? I don't want the big wedding. I want the marriage. Yeah. And he was like, well, let's go ahead and have the wedding. Aww. They're both succumbing to the other they're yeah, both right. so they're both winning if there's a, so but there, yeah. what did they have like what happened did they have a big wedding they did have a big wedding well i don't know about his big wedding but they had a wedding there was compromise and at the end That's of the right. end you know um if you haven't watched it uh <laughs> where can we watch the i mean hbo side note okay hbo yeah but um yeah spoiler alert they actually end up getting a house in the suburbs <laughs> at the end yeah. of the show itself so nice they had the wedding and they got the suburb and I don't know if they ever got the dog, but anyway, um, <laughs> so right. that's kind of like an example of letting your spouse win, but they both let each other win yeah. in a sense. Makes sense. But they were both being selfless yeah. in giving to Right. Well, they were both being other. selfish first. Right. Then they communicated. That's right. <laughs> and then they were being selfless. We tie that all in together. Yeah. Yeah. All, all right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> if you have to criticize... Do it rarely and lovingly. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm not sure. That's an interesting rule of marriage if you have to criticize. I'm trying to think of what that would look like in terms of, um, it says do it rarely and lovingly. Maybe constructively. Sure. Constructive criticism. I mean, it's, you know. Yeah. As long as your love language isn't words of affirmation, because that could be challenging at times in order to say it in a loving way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause then I feel real guilty. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not good enough. <laughs> right, right. Here we go. Then we spiral oh. to childhood. <laughs> here we go. Uh, that's a good one. I'd have to give that one some more thought. All right. So if anything, maybe constructive criticism, but do it rarely. Right. If you're going to do give constructive criticism, but doing lovingly. Well, I love I can, you, but don't ever use yeah, but. Don't use that. Don't use the word yeah. but. Yeah. So I did that this week, this past week. My husband tends when he makes dinner um, to leave the food out on the stove in containers 
and doesn't put it in the fridge. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. All I can think about are, oh, bacteria restaurant. Like mm-hmm. it's just in me. And I said, I appreciate that you made dinner. However, can we please put the containers into the fridge? However's a fancy butt. I used it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, or I would love if we could put, I mean, you already packaged it up. Just put it in the fridge. It doesn't need to sit out. How about this? Or I just Ooh. do it myself and I don't say anything. I, re- <laughs> I really appreciate that you made dinner and it would really mean a lot to me. Ah, if you that's why she's. Put, there you go. Thank you, Janelle. There's some constructive. Yep. There we go. <laughs> some <laughs> loving constructive criticism. There it is. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> Number five. Never bring up mistakes from the past. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, I would agree. Remember that time that. three years ago when you said this about right. that? And you didn't put the toilet seat down and then I found mm. it. I mean, that never happened. Oh, I was like, did that really happen? <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. But, I mean, it could be so obscure as that. Like, you didn't, it's dark, that you go did to the happen bathroom. to Brandy. I don't, I don't think so. Greg. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that one right he'll there. He'll tell me if that happened or not. Now he'll listen. He'll listen. <laughs> yeah, I would, I mean, just from experience, I mean, yeah, but the past is the past. We can't change it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Gotta grow. That's right. Move past it. All right, cool. Number six. Neglect the whole world rather than each other. I think what ultimately what that's saying is make each other a priority. Ah, okay. See, so you just marriage put, a priority. What, We're just pre- going to replace it with whatever she says. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Neglect yourself. the whole world uh, rather than each other. No, because I need my Make need each my other people. a priority. That makes more sense. Yes, right. yeah. Because I need my people outside of my that's relationship. Right. Right. And For you sure. do. That's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I need wine and I need the girls. <laughs> Right. And, and I, and I always say, have your girls night. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Encourage that. Heck yeah. And uh, yeah, we, I'll have a guy's night where I'll have my own me time. I mean, I I feel like it's, it's important to to have your own time absolutely with your people and with yourself. Um, here's one, uh, seven, never go to sleep mad. (sighs) Well, in my own experience, (laughs) I've definitely gone to sleep a number of times angry, probably had the worst, you know, or one of the worst nights sleep. Um, I don't know if that's so realistic all the time. It sounds good in theory. However, if you are up till 3 a.m. arguing about something and you're both exhausted, you're getting nowhere. I've, yeah. I, I will say I've, I've fallen asleep <laughs> oh, <laughs> during an argument. I'm like, like, like you uh, said, yeah. it's exhausting. Mm-hmm. And you're just laying there and you're like. And you if know, you are the yeah. one getting battered, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, I'm just going to go to sleep now <laughs> because. I have, I've just gone to sleep. I'm yeah. like, okay, you know what? I, I'm and it's so funny because. Tonight. We can revisit this. I hear time. so, so many speeches. Oh yeah. Like from Brian. Words Apart- of advice. Don't Words of go advice. To bed don't bad. go to Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Are you no. married? <laughs> <laughs> so we all disagree with that right. one. <laughs> yes. I don't necessarily disagree with it, but you know, I guess you can try and work out, you know, work it out. And if you can't, then, then, then what would you do? I, what do you mean if you could like if, oh, if in the evening, in the evening, if, if like you're not getting any, if you're realizing you're not getting anywhere, ah, if you're not getting anywhere, like what, how should you handle that situation? You're, you're, you realize this isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Can you table the conversation? I mean, if you both can mutually agree, we are not seeing eye to eye whatsoever and we need some sleep because that will mm-hmm. hopefully allow us to regroup tomorrow when we're in a much better mental space, mm-hmm. then that's what you do. You agree mm-hmm. to disagree for the evening. Get your much needed rest and otherwise, sleep on it. Otherwise right. you might say some things like toothpaste. Oh, you absolutely. can't put it back in. <sighs> that's, that's true. Right. You yep. can, it's just not the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> not the same at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, next one. At least once a day, compliment your spouse. Love it. I think it's a great idea. 100%. Damn, girl. Damn, <laughs> you looking good in that mm. pink. Hey. <laughs> We are. That's we are, right. We are. You're like my my work if you're husband. On, I got a little bit of pink on this. <laughs> a little bit of pink. <laughs> all right. I, I like that too. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like to be, or, you know, get compliments? Mm. And you know what, ladies, buy your guy a flower. Yeah. Really? Heck yeah. I would love it if somebody bought me flowers. Noted. 
Let me find out who she Big is. Big bouquet is coming your right? way. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hey, I said I have a wedding to plan. <laughs> <laughs> I like flowers, but you know, it's, it's nice. That's nice. Okay. Um, hmm. All Can right. Next one. Know. There you go. And, and I'm sure other guys would, would like it too. You know. All right. Um, when you've done wrong, admit it and ask for forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. I feel Humble like yourself. Yeah. Without a doubt. I done messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tail between the legs. We all have to and do don't it. Say but. Don't and say don't say but. Don't say however. That's right. However, will you forgive me? Right. No. no. I would, but I would, no, no, no buts. No buts. <laughs> I'm sorry. It would really mean a lot if you would forgive me. There you go. See, Tim, that's important though, because so we do this in our house, even with our kids. They're always like, sorry, whatever. Hey, do you forgive him? Do you forgive her? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So asking for the forgiveness, going one step further, key. I like that. Boom. I make my kids do that too. Yeah. Like, what do you say? Sorry. Right. And do you, do you accept? Like, have that conversation. Yes. yes thank you. <laughs> Until they say no. And then you're like, and okay. You're like, All right, let's do this again. <laughs> and right. then I'm like, back to back, tie you together. That's right. Now you get to hang yep. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes of, of hugs. <laughs> That's right. 20 minutes. I have seen that where mother made all her kids hug. And for like five minutes. And then they just pass out on each other. And then they were like, all right, can we be done? Can you get along? Okay. There you go. Number 10. We've got three more. Number 10. Kiss. Well, That's yeah. it? Yeah. Just kiss. Totally. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Who else are you going to be kissing? <laughs> you might as well. Well, I mean, I guess like if you've been married, married for, you know, a, a long time, yeah. don't forget to kiss. That's right. Don't yeah. forget to go on dates. True. Yeah. Don't forget to, yeah, take your spouse on a date. And ladies plan the dates sometimes too. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, it's I feel like in my, and I'm probably saying this to myself, my husband plans a lot of the dates. So Brandy. I've got one planned for Friday. Take Don't try Greg me. on a date. We're, we're Friday night. We're going to Be Kind Rewind 80s, 90s, 2000s night. Oh. Where? What is that? Oscura. There's a DJ and all the it's things. It's a what? It's a, it's a, it's be kind rewind like blockbuster days. Okay. It's an eighties, nineties, two thousands DJ night at a club. Well, restaurant slash coffee. Where's place. this? Oscura. In don't, you don't come to Manatee County or Bradenton. So, um, that's Oscura? why. Oscura. O-S-C-U-R-A. Shout out to Wade Hamilton on the corner of ninth and ninth. Well, Manatee. Avenue I know 9th. nothing about Bradenton. It's a cross. Yeah. Is it downtown? Almost. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know where that you is. You should come out Friday night. Okay. Uh, I got a wedding. Eh, lame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number 11. Never be angry at the same time. That's not possible. I was like, good it? luck with that. Like, <laughs> if you guys are arguing. <laughs> right. And, and not seeing eye to eye. Angry at the same. Never be angry at the same time. Well, if you're angry, then obviously there's a reciprocal to that, right? Like. Not necessarily. Like if you're angry and I'm coming at, I mean, you probably, might I could be angry too. at something that you said that you didn't realize that you said, but then when I voice it, well, then, but, but see, <laughs> but then that's where yeah. the, like, I, I felt a certain way when you said this and now I'm telling you this, well, now you're turning it around, you're playing victim, victim yeah. and now you're angry at me for being, and that's being for, angry at the same time. Right. But don't do that's, that. that's where I had like issues. <laughs> that's why I stopped talking. All right. Anyway, this is all coming in full circle. <laughs> Last but not least, and I like this one. Be your spouse's biggest fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I need a hype man. Like, hype me up. Mm -hmm. Send me out in the world. Heck, yeah. I'm about to conquer, right? Yeah, I need that. That's part of my words of affirmation, I think, too. Like, it's more than just like, you're doing a good job. Great job today. Yeah. It's like, you're owning it. Biggest like, fan, need, like, biggest support right. system, yes. support your spouse and their dreams. Even if they're crazy. Even if they're crazy. <laughs> I've had some crazy ideas. Hey, well, <laughs> you crazy. I am. And you love me. That's all right. Uh, Anything else to add to that? Or, I mean. I'm in agreement with be your spouse's biggest fan, 100%. Um, yeah. I mean, I would hope my husband would agree that I'm yeah. his biggest fan, too. I think he would. Yeah. I don't think there's much more to agree with that. Right. We all seem in agreement with that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Is there anything else that you would like to add to, to these rules? Or a 20 second hug is a big one. Yeah, 20 one. second hug. I love that one. Don't yeah, 20 second hug. That one. Um, yeah, no, know that uh, this is not necessarily added to the rules, but know that you have, when you're building a relationship, it's 
18 to 24 months where the brain chemicals are high. So your dopamine is high. You That's oh. when you're like, I'm in love. I'm so in love. And then after 18 to 24 months, it all evens out. So you've got to build what you can build in 18 to 24 months because once it all evens out and you're not feeling those surges of chemicals, you look at this person across from you and you're like, do I really like you? You know? Yeah. Okay. I thought I was totally head over heels in love with you, but now do I really like you? So do you think, do you recommend or do you not suggest, well, what do you, then 18 to 24 months, you're saying. 18 to 24 months. I see so many people getting engaged within a year. Right. A year and a half. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that falls inside that 18 to 24. So you would recommend not Get getting counsel, premarital counseling. If you're getting engaged after a year, a year and a half, I did it myself. We got engaged after a year. Get into some counseling. Get into something where you're having somebody challenge you, where you're talking big picture items, not just, oh, we're so in love. You know, great. I'm so happy for you, but let's talk deeper than yeah. just that. I just thought of something and um, I've, I've used, I'm using this like in a current relationship and in past. Um, it's a book or it's a, it's a, you can use it as a, there's a card game. It's called, yes. we're not really strangers mm. and they have a couple's edition of it, mm -hmm. but they have questions and I love to take it everywhere. If you're going on like on a road trip somewhere, just going out to dinner and you're taking a, a drive to dinner, bring a few cards, take it, bring the deck to dinner. And it's just questions about, I you know, like to ask your, ask your spouse. And or your partner, right. and it opens up conversation that you wouldn't typically just have just sitting there. Yeah, um, I I think that's been super helpful for me um, because it opened like it's just conver it's just questions that you know you wouldn't typically ask each other. Right. Um, but it's a question in the card game. You have to answer it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but it also brings up like you get like I feel like it it goes much deeper, and you build a, a much more emotional connection with your partner. Yeah. Because yeah. I think when Greg and I go on dates, it's like, so how was your week? How was right. the kids? Like yeah. it's, it's very surface because we're just busy Yeah, these, parents. these questions get so like super, really cool. like they get super deep and they, yeah. and like the couple's version of it is really cool. Um, I don't know. I've, and it's called, yeah, it's called We're Not Really Strangers. And All it's right. in like an, a red, they, they have a, there's also a book one that you just can go through and just has a bunch of questions and you can just pick one. Like, 300, 300 or 3,000 questions or something like that. Just pick one. Wow. All right. That's great. And and it I've I've loved it. So I highly recommend. Go put that in my Amazon cart. Yeah. Right. We're not really strangers <laughs> is one, but there's there's a few others. But that's the one that I have that I can think of off the top of my head. The one that we've used before is called Served. Served, okay. And there's, um, there's cards for him and cards for her. And it's like, know what? I get to dress your out. I get to pick your outfit tonight or whatever it is, or, um, girls night out card. So it kind of get, it's like more playful. It's not as deep. Um, but it's more playful. Like, all right, I get a back massage and then you have your own card. So you can totally say, Nope, no girls night. It's an us night. And you can totally play the, the cancel card uh, like on that. Ooh. Be like, um, I'm canceling <laughs> girls night. You're all mine. You know what that might be. Yeah. So we have those that are okay. served. Okay. So that's yeah, more of like a, an actions thing yeah. in a sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I, but I stand by. I like that one. I've, uh, I've learned so much about myself and about my partner um, with just, just this little card game. I mean, there's, there's a ton of, ton of questions in there yeah. and you just take a deck, like, like just take a, a little Pretty bit with you yeah. and you have a conversation for the entire night. That's and great. sometimes it's one question that spawns into something more. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. So I like that even for couples that have been together for a long yeah, time. Yeah. hundred percent. Great idea. Yeah. hundred percent. Cause it, it keeps, <laughs> yeah. Like, years. right. Like what else do you need to talk about? <laughs> right. But uh, so much. there's so much, but so you much. think you've talked about everything. Yeah. You think, you know, your your other half, but do you? Yeah. It's interesting. Just good for thought. There you go. Tip of the day. Anything else? We're, about, um, we're, we're I have my rest of my trending. Oh, yeah. okay. How many more you got? I only got like a couple. Okay, what do you got? I got sustainability. Sustainability of yeah. what? What's trending so, with that? Well, because <laughs> you uh, couples are choosing to choose venues that are more environmentally conscious. So, for instance, the bishop. 
Um, you can choose the bishop because we have a habitat for our manatees. We are very conscious about the environment. So you can choose a venue that's con that's got an environmental cause. Maybe ask all your guests to make a donation instead of a gift. There's also plant-based menus, plant-based food, recycled paper for invitations. So you can just be really sustainable and, you know, try to not leave as big a footprint as you normally might. Have you gone vegan again? I'm working <laughs> on that, it. Is that why we're I'm doing all these plant-based things? I'm right vegetarian. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm so close to going back to vegan. So close. Um, and then colored wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. Colored? Yes, what? like colors, like greens and, and coral. And, and mustard. Oh. No. And magenta. Mustard oh. is only for bridesmaids, Tim. <laughs> We've had this conversation. <laughs> um, but no, like really, really doing like the the um, light green or the sage or the... I saw a coral dress recently that was really, really gorgeous. And look, on TikTok, and it was like the girl got all this slack for wearing a dre that dress and she got all kinds of like hate for it. And I was like, girl, no, you are setting the trend. They don't know what they're talking about. Ignore them. Mm. So, yes. And then the last one is the embroidered veils. So, picture color, because color is really in with Viva Magenta and mustard. Mm -hmm. um, embroidered <laughs> veils. So, adding that touch of color to your whole entire dress, so especially if you're going with like a simple lace um, and the the sweethearts are out. It's, it's very square that are in, capes are in, and embroidered veils are in with some color, some florals on there. So, I think those boho, you know, modern colors that we've been talking about the last few podcasts and incorporate them into your veil. Cool. So yeah, that's what I got. Awesome. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that's going to do it for us. Janelle, Yay! thank you so Yo. much for yes. joining us. This was absolutely awesome. Um, and I, I've learned a lot. Right. And I hope our listeners, uh, you know, learn a lot as well. Janelle, uh, tell our listeners how they can contact you if, if, you know, they would like to or how they can find out more about you. So I'm on psychology today, um, or they can send me an email. I don't, do you want me to share yeah. just email address? It's Janelle. So J A N E L L E Damrau D A M R A U at gmail.com. So feel free to send an email along if you have any questions or need any, need anything. Yeah. And so you, you, are, you are a licensed mental health counselor. Uh, and not, so not only you do, you do marriage counseling, yes. but not only that, you do other... I do individual counseling individual. as well. Awesome. Yeah. Which all of our industry people, yeah. we're in a tough, tough industry. And I feel like um, <clears throat> definitely looking into that mental health because we are a people-pleasing role, mm -hmm. I feel like, in, in what we do. And so having that mental health guide is important awesome. for sure. And so. you're located in Lakewood Ranch, you Lakewood said? Lakewood Ranch, yeah. Lakewood Ranch. Yep. Awesome. Thank Janelle, you guys so thank much. you. This yeah, was awesome. I really appreciate it. Was it. Yeah. Brandy, <laughs> it's been fun. This is podcast number 11. Wow. Wow. Double, double, double. Is this 11 yeah, or 12? 11. I think it's 11. I think it's 11 because 10 is your favorite number and that was the last time. That was last week. Yeah. Podcast number 11, <laughs> the scoop weddings unveiled. That's going to do it. Thank you guys. Peace, Peace. and chicken grease. I know it. <laughs>